Hello, everyone. This is Zenja Glass. Thank you for taking this class. This class is titled Get It Before You Get It. At least I think that's the title I gave it. Get it before you get it. So by this time, you should have done your homework. You should have a pretty good understanding of who you are and a pretty good understanding of what is it that you that you that you want to you really want to do. If money wasn't an option, what are those things? So now that you have a basic understanding of that and you've got a little bit of a, I'm just going to say some oomph behind you. Now the second stage, uh, second step is capturing that. We need to capture it in the spirit before we receive it in the physical. Now, I realize that not everyone taking this class may have been listening to my podcast. I have a podcast called Unlocking Greatness Podcast with Zenja Glass. And I gave examples of how before I do anything major, before I expand my company or start a company or anything that I do, I have to spend time literally, I will literally go into an empty office unit and pace the floor. And I've done it for months in one, one case for a little bit over a year, or, or I'll drive around a building or I, I can't quite explain it other than to say, I have to know that it belongs to to me. I have to get a vision of what is it that is for me? Because once I know it's mine, no devil in hell can take it away from me. And so I call that capturing it in the spirit. Now, for those who may not be, I hate to use the term religious. Let's just look at it from this point of view. Visualize what is it that you want? Claim it. Visualize it. There's a passage um, that I want to turn to uh, and, and it's just going to kind of be hard to follow my class if you're totally against the Bible and don't want to hear anything about it. So I apologize in advance. I should have told you I love God with all my heart, mind, body and soul. And I do read my Bible. So if it bothers you to hear a few scriptures, you might want to just unsubscribe out of this class right now. And I apologize. But for those who don't mind, follow me on this real quick, because I can't separate the two. I can't just give you some business class and not uh, give you the meat of what keeps me together when my life is falling apart or when I feel like I can't make it, or when I feel like I don't have what it takes to make this dream come true. So if I don't give you the meat, my source, I don't need to be on camera speaking. I don't need to be doing anything because then I'm just another person out there trying to pump you up and that's not who I am. So I digress. Uh, turn to Second Corinthians chapter 10. And, uh, and again, I'm not a minister. I'm not anything like that. I'm just a woman that loves God and I go to the Bible for my source. But in Second Corinthians chapter 10, if you can just capture this, you're going to love it. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For we, uh, it says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. And you may say, well, Z, where are you going with this? Because we're talking about capturing something in the spirit. You have to capture and get that vision and know what's yours. But we don't do it the way the world does it. By, you know, working ourselves into the ground until eventually, you know, we get somewhere. We capture it in the spirit first. So check this out. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. Oh, that's interesting. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Well, wait a minute. You mean there's strongholds in my life that can be demolished? You mean there's something going on in the spiritual that enables me to demolish, to tear down, to pull down strongholds against me? Now, for those who feel like, Z, this is a bit much. I'm really not into the scriptures like that. That's fine. Let me put it this way. There are, call it forces, call it energy, call it bad vibes, call it bad people, whatever phrase you want to put on it. There's always something there that wants to pull you down and keep you from accomplishing and capturing what you believe is yours. Can we at least agree on that? There's something there. I just choose to use the word, um, the phrase demolish strongholds because that's what the Bible teaches me. Verse five, we demolish arguments. Okay. And every pretension pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Interesting. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we take captive every thought. Let that sink in to make it obedient to Christ. God, you show me who I am. I have a vision of who I can become and what I want. That's so far out there. I don't know if it's possible. I don't even have the money for it. I don't have the support. I don't have the education. I don't have experience. I don't have other people I can depend on to help me get there. But you're showing me it's yours. 
And on the other end, I've got the enemy telling me that can't happen. You're dreaming too big. You think you're better than other people. That's never going to happen. Look at all the failures you've had in the past. But then on this end, something's telling me, no, 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 no. You capture those thoughts and make it obedient to Christ. Capture those thoughts and make it obedient to Christ. My father tells me that I'm a royal priesthood, a chosen people. My father teaches me in Psalm 1 that for the man who uh, meditates on his law, that he's like a tree planted by streams of water. That, that those leaves don't even wither and that in due season, I'm going to reap my harvest and that everything I do will be successful. So I have to capture those thoughts and make it and force it to be obedient. This is how I capture things in the spirit. And, and again, it's kind of hard um, pivoting back and forth because some of you are very much aware of my podcast. And I assume whoever's listening to this class may not know who I am from Adam, but I give, I've given lots of examples in my actual podcast and situations where things were so against me, but how, when God showed it to be in the spirit, how I went after it and got it. Just like when I got one of my very first office spaces, didn't have a dime to my name, but God made it clear to me, I, I need for you to start your agency. I said, God, I don't even have a lounge, let alone a lobby. I can't even afford a small closet. And God led me to a building and said, walk in here. And I didn't want to walk in there. I didn't even have the money. I had like almost nothing. And, and the guy shows me this entire suite um, of, of all of these studios and rooms and a kitchen and a, and a reception area and all these different offices and a little conference area. And I'm like, OK, this is nice, but I can only afford a little closet. And then the next thing you know, the next day or two, when I go to sign the lease for a little closet, by the way, he says something kept me up all night. I don't know what it is, but something's telling me you're going to grow into this space. This is yours. I said, I can't afford that. And he's like, this is yours. Take it. And I won't go through the details, but I'll just say the management of my building did an amazing job and 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 worked that out. And it was totally God. So that's just that's a weak example, but it's an example of capturing in the spirit, doing what you've been told to do. And the earth must yield and give you what's been given in the spirit. So point number two, and I'm not drifting. And I apologize if it sounds like I'm preaching because I'm not a preacher, but I get excited about this is you need to capture it. In other words, you need to proclaim what is yours. So you have to capture it and get it in your hand. What is your proclamation? What, what, what is it that you're being shown that's yours? Now, that may take meditating. And there's all different ways you can meditate. You figure that out. There's a gazillion videos on that. For me, I just sit in my closet. For those who know me, I turn the lights out. Every major move I've made in my life, including the podcast I started up, was me sitting in my closet saying, to be honest with you, in a dark space, inwardly in a dark space, not not doing well, and saying, God, what is it that you ask of me? What do you want me to do? I don't know what to do. Just show me. And, and even with the podcast I started up, God just put in my heart, I want you, he showed me a vision of like having headsets uh, on my ear. I, I want you to speak to the people. I said, God, but I'm barely making it through myself. I'm tired. At that time, my son was extremely ill, extremely. Many of you are aware of some of the things he went through. Unfortunately, I've lost him a couple months ago. You know, uh, there was so much going on in my life from my finances, marriage, you name it. I just was like, God, I'm tired. I, I don't know. How can I give when I'm barely hanging on myself? And God just pushed in my spirit, give that. I said, but God, I fight daily for a relationship with you. God put in my spirit, tell them that. I don't know nothing about a podcast. I don't know how to spread messages to people. Get on the camera and say that. And little by little, and, and again, I'm just sharing my testimony. If you go back and listen to some of my podcasts, you'll see one of them is called My Testimony. And I talk about all of this. So I'm kind of repeating some of this for people who may be new to me. But the point I'm getting at, point number two is to capture it. And I'm trying to take away the fears that you may have and capture in the dream because it may seem so out there. I think some of you may be so afraid to truly capture the dream, you know, in terms of what you really want to do, that it's hard to even formulate it and write it down and commit to it, which, by the way, is what point number two is all about, uh, capturing it in the spirit. I want you to uh, spend some time meditating uh, and asking God, is it mine? That's it. Is it, is it. is it for me? Is it mine? Remember before King David went back into war and he asked God, shall I do this? 
and, and God gave him permission, and he went into war against all odds, and he won. There's a passage, I didn't even turn to it yet, in Romans 4.17. Romans 4.17 talks about against all hope. And the reason it's important that you guys get this in you is because I know when it gets to this point about capturing what's yours, that's when it gets difficult. You know, kind of like how can I start up an agency or anything when I don't have any money, I don't have an office, I don't have this and that. You know, and, and you really should listen to that podcast about my testimony because there's so many examples I gave in that of, of things that were against all hope. But check this out. Romans 4. Uh, what is it? Uh, verse 17. I wrote that down here. Romans 4, 17. Um, this is this is concerning Abraham it says, uh, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls things. That are not as though they were. Let me say that again. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not. In other words, you know you can't see this dream coming true. So cause things that are not as though they were. Check this out. Against all hope, Abraham and hope believed. And so became the father of many nations, just that it has been said to him. So shall your offsprings be without without weakening in his face. Uh, faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief. Ooh, regarding the promise of God, Ooh, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded. Ooh, that's a powerful word. Those are powerful words, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Now, I'm not turning this into a Bible lesson. I'm not trying to sneak some ministry on you. You know, all the evangelists and ministers and deacons and pastors, they can do all of that. I'm just truly giving you what pumps me up and what encourages me and, 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 and how God feels about when we respond to things against all hope. So when you spend this next part of your, of your, of your time capturing, I don't need, you really don't have to write much down on this, uh, a second part of this assignment. I want you to sit and I want you to dream again. Some of you have not been dreaming in so long. And I know because we're tired, we're worn out. Life has kicked our butts, right? Barely have time to think, let alone dream. I want you to spend some time and I need you to capture it. You got to capture it and, and get it in your hand. All I'm saying is sit, meditate, spend, I don't care if it's an hour, a day, a week, a month, however long it takes. And I just want you to visualize what's yours. What is it you want to see happen? It could be writing a book, starting a business, starting an organization. I don't know. It could be a lot of things. Visualize it and capture it in your hands, okay? So when you're done with that, you're going to come back, and we're going to go into part three and then part four, and you're going to be blown away by the transformation um, that I pray and I believe can happen in your lives, okay? Love you all. This is Zenja Glass. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is Z with Unlocking Greatness podcast. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the notification button. Love you all. Bye bye.